In the first part of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the carcasses for a built-in. And that's going to include dado and rabbit joinery, and then cutting splines in the front of the cases to put face frames on, as well as a base for everything to sit on and level it on site for construction. The next videos will be making the face frame, making the doors because the bottom cubbies are cabinets, and then finishing painting and installation. This is going to be the basic layout of the built-in I'm making. It's going to be a set of base cabinets and then bookcases on top of those cabinets and it's nestled in between two walls. On the left hand side is going to be a high topped desk that's going to be cantilevered off the wall for their kids to do homework at and on the right side is going to be a desk for um, office work with the computer on it and the height of this tabletop is going to be the same as the height of the cabinet so the height of the cabinets was determined by the height of the desk so in order to start something like this the first thing you have to do is make a base and the base is going to be sitting in between two since it's already you know a, a finished room the room's carpeted and the base of this is going to be sitting in between two sets of molding that are on either sides of the wall now the length is obviously predetermined i'm going to have it butt up against both sides so it's going to be 124 inches long but when you put the base in the room which is going to be made up of two by fours no room is perfectly flat or level, so you're going to have to level this base. So a 2 by 4 is 3 and a half inches, and I'm going to rip it to 2 inches and 3 quarters so that when I level it in the room, it'll sit flush with the top of my molding so that the front of the built-in, the molding can run across the front and meet in the corner. Obviously these dimensions, I mention all this because these dimensions could change. This is the actual uh, style of molding that's in the room and these dimensions can change based on if it's an older house, this molding is going to be more like five and a half or six inches tall and you could adjust the size of your base. So I bought four two by four by twelves so that I can make the base in one piece instead of having to piece it together and I'm going to rip um, those all down on my table saw to two and three quarter inches. So after ripping the, all those down, I cut these to length, which is 142 inches, and these will be the front and the back of my base. Now the built-in itself, the shelves and the cabinets are going to be 12 inches. So I'm going to make my base 11 inches apart and that will give me plenty of room to deal with thickness of the molding in, um, on the floor in the back because you're going to have a space there and also if the, the vertical wall in the back is uneven that will give me a, a good inch of play to move the cabinets back and forth. So since two of these together is three inches thick I'm going to cut the middles of these at eight inches and I'm going to put one on either end and then space them a foot apart so I'm cutting 11 total and I'm going to cut those out of the extra pieces I have on my radial arm saw. Once those are cut I'm going to go through and start attaching them by countersinking two holes and then putting two two and a half inch wood screws through each piece on both sides. So one thing that has changed since I made the, the base for this built-in is this went from being 12 inches wide, the whole thing, to 16 inches wide. So I actually had to remake my base, which isn't a huge deal. But now that that's done, I could start making the four cases that will make up the bulk of the built-in. Which is going to be, originally I was going to make these in two separate parts, but now I'm making four cases, which will have the book case on shops on top and the drawers on the bottom. So I'm gonna, I made a cut list, I'm gonna cut out the two sides 
and there's going to be six shelves that make up each. And then I'm going to put them together with dados and rabbits. And of course it started raining as soon as I started pulling these sheets out. So I'm kind of stuck with cutting them in my shop. I usually cut them down to size outside on some saw horses where it's easier to maneuver. And then true them up on the table saw because you don't get a really nice cut with the circular saw. So now I'm stacking them in two to kind of cut down in time. And cutting them to... 15 and a quarter which will give me enough room to then send them through the table saw and true up that side to get them to 15. I ended up using about two and three quarter sheets of this three quarter inch maple veneer plywood to make all of my sides and now I'm going to make all the horizontal pieces for the cabinet. There's going to be seven. I'm going to rough cut them to a, um, a little bit wider than 15 so I could trim them down to 15. And the final uh, width is 30 and an eighth, so I'm going to cut them a little bit longer than that. And for each sheet of plywood, I should get um, nine pieces. I'm going to need 28 total, so I'll get 27. And with some scrap, I'll make the last piece. So I'm going to start ripping all of that down now. After all that, I ended up with a stack of about 17 slabs that, except for the a couple of them which I just left long because there was no sense of trimming them down to 15 and a quarter. They're all about 15 and a quarter. So now I'm going to put them all on my table saw and trim them down to 15 inches. So I'll have a stack of 8 foot by 15 inch slabs to start building the cases with. Next step in this process after these are all ripped down to 15 inches is trimming them to 93 inches which is going to be my vertical height. So since this is 8 foot plywood it's a total of 96 inches. So I'm just going to be um, cutting 3 inches off the ends of all of my boards. To help with that process I'm going to use my radial arm saw and I attach these two top side stops on both sides of the fence because my outfeed table on either side isn't super long and instead of trying to wrestle all these boards I can mark them and just slide them under that spot and this will keep this from wanting to lift or tip over. Once these are trimmed down to height, I can now start cutting my rabbits and my dados that will accept the top and the bottom and all my shells. Now, you, there's many ways you could do this. You could join them with biscuits. You could even get away with joining them with screws. Um, I just like to do it this way because it makes a very sturdy end product, especially if you're transporting something somewhere else. And I just don't prefer butt joints pretty much ever when constructing furniture. So I marked the bottom and the top of each piece and that will be a groove for the top and the bottom. And then I marked um, a data which will be the top of where the drawers are and also where the desk will sit. With my leftover space, I knew I was going to have three shelves so I divided this number by three and got the spacing for three shelves and they're all about like 15 and 3 quarters inches apart. So it will be three shelves which will give me four spaces for storage. I put the dado stack in my radial arm saw and then I shimmed up this table by two sheets of plywood because my back fence is fairly thick and if I didn't shim it the carriage of the saw would hit the fence. Not only that, but now it makes my table much wider and gives me a sturdy base for cutting all of these dados. Now, we have a video on YouTube that will show you how to do this on a table saw with a circular saw and with a router. Um, I j got this radial arm saw before I made that video, so this is not on there, which is why I'm showing you how to do it now. 
and one of the reasons I wanted this is because I do cut a lot of dados and when I have eight sheets of plywood with seven to cut in each I think this is going to be the fastest safest way to do it in a shop this size so I now that I have everything set up I could just keep sliding and marking and cutting all of those So I placed that piece on top of there and made all my marks and now I'm going to transfer them to the top for cutting. And the key to this is the first piece I cut is going to be the original and I'm going to use that piece to mark every single one. If you use consecutive pieces to mark little sixteenth of an inch off or thirty seconds of an inch off which won't really matter will multiply down the line so if you use the same pattern each time this usually turns out well I haven't had any problems with it and it turns out fine so I have all of the rabbits and dados on these cut and I'm going to orient it like a ball. and I marked fronts on both sides and now I'm going to cut a rabbit on the back side of every piece and it's important to mark front and back because if you cut them all the same way you're going to have opposite pieces and that is no fun. So the dado on my radial arm saw worked really well. It missed going all the way through the piece by like a half of an inch which should not be that big of a deal because when I cut that rabbit it should take off this piece that didn't get cut and if there's a little bit left I can just chip it off with my chisel. So I'm going to cut a rabbit in the backs of all of these for the backer of the cabinets. Now I accidentally ordered half inch plywood for that so I'm going to cut a half inch rabbit and dry fit them together and if that half inch plywood just makes this too heavy I'm going to go by quarter inch and the extra space won't make a difference in the construction of the cabinet but I'm just kind of hoping even though it's over a kill I can get away with that half inch ply for the back. So I put my half inch dado stack in there and I have it raised to so cut into that three quarter inch plywood about three eighths of an inch then I put a sacrificial fence on there and now I'm going to run the back side of all of those boards through. thing I'm going to do to these before I can put them together is on the front side of each piece I'm going to cut an eighth inch groove that goes about a half inch deep which is going to receive a spline. I'll cut the same groove in the wood I'm using for the face frame and that's how I'm going to attach face frames to these cabinets. So now I can start cutting my shelves to length and width for these cases and assembling them. Now unfortunately yesterday I wasn't really thinking with the rain and with, so after cutting the rabbit in the back obviously I'm going to need shorter shelves than the 15 inch shelves I cut. So this opening is 14 and 7 16 so I'm gonna have to take all the lumber I cut for the shelves and rip it down by to 14 and 7 16 so that they won't go past where this groove is for the back so after I do that I could bring them to the radial arm saw and just cut them the size and start putting these together all the work on the sides done and the shelves ripped down to the proper size it's just a matter of cutting these to width on the radial arm saw and I'm starting off with 30 inches and then I'm going to run them through my table saw and add that 
groove to the front for the face frame on all of these. It's easier to do in smaller sections in my shop, so I'm going to cut them and then run all through. And each case is going to take six fixed shelves, and then there will be a seven shelf that I won't add to the end for um, the adjustable cabinets. So I'm going to cut and build these one at a time, and the reason I'm doing that is because if your measurements are a little off and down the line you find out you're off by a little bit, you can adjust the width of your shelves, that last cabinet, to make sure you're at the exact measurement. If you cut everything beforehand and it's too small, then you can't go back and do that. So for the sides, I'm attaching these with glue and screws, and I'm doing that because I don't have enough clamps or enough space to um, clamp them all and let them dry. So if you use the screws, it's like clamping. So in the inside of the dados, I went through and pre-drilled some holes through to the front, so I don't have to try and guess where those screw holes are. And then I flip them over and countersunk those holes. Now the nice thing about built-ins is you will never see the sides of these. So not only can you put whatever hardware you want without having to patch them, but you won't have to paint them when it comes time to paint. And now with my sides cut, I can start assembling these together. So it's time to start gluing these together and I'm basically just gonna add glue to all my grooves, put my shells in, and then put the top layer on, screw it from that side, flip it over and screw it, and then I can measure and cut my back. And I've decided to just bite the bullet and go buy more plywood and go with the quarter inch back. They'll just be so much lighter. And then um, once that's all done, the most important thing is going to be constantly checking for the squareness of the shelf cavities, but also the entire carcass itself because unsquare ones will just make insulation so much harder and attaching the face frames harder. I like to use the backer as another way to square up the cabinet. You could see that it's flush over in this corner. It meets perfectly. But in this corner, I'm off by a good half inch. And before I cut the back, I measured, I measured my diagonals and those were off as well. So in order to square this up, I'm going to push in this corner with my knee until this excess disappears. And then put a screw in there. Now when I go to measure my diagonals, if they're equal, I'll know the cabinet is square. I'm going to go through where all my shelves are, draw a line, and screw the backer into all the backs of the shelves and the top. This 
so now that the bulk of this is together, you can see how those splines, when you go to add this, this is obviously oversized, I haven't cut it. When you go to add that spline, you'll just be able to attach the face frames right to it. Plus, you can kind of see in the video, across the horizontals, I, they're all lined up. So you'll have no problem making your face frames square or lining them up.